Hey guys, it's Warren here, and today I'm doing a type of video which I've never really done before, and that's where I'm just sitting in front of the camera and talking to you. And the reason I'm doing it is because it's about a topic which I've become quite passionate about, and that's clean eating, and all of these new clean eating dietary approaches that are coming out. In case you haven't gathered by now, this was actually sparked by the BBC3 documentary that was on not long ago called Clean Eating's Dirty Secrets, as well as some reaction videos I was watching on YouTube and some debates I got into um, with some comments on those videos as well. Now, speaking of those comments I was reading on YouTube and participating in debates in, um, a lot of clean eating adopters seem to have a lot of theories as to why you shouldn't trust the advice of medical professionals such as dietitians. One of the theories that stuck out for me is that the dietitians are actually being brainwashed by the government because the government are in this big conspiracy where they're being paid by dairy farmers um, to have dairy placed in the food pyramid and it's the food pyramid that dietitians look at to help advise patients with their nutritional needs. Now, I think that's complete nonsense, and the reason being is because dietitians have to follow guidance from the Manual of Dietetic Practice, among other places, and the Manual of Dietetic Practice is developed with the BDA, which is the British Dietetic Association, um, which is actually an independent body from the government. With that in mind, I'm gonna use this evidence-based manual used by healthcare professionals to show you a few more points as to why clean eating isn't as good as we're made out to believe. And I'm going to use my helpful pointer to show you some of those facts in the book. And to think, some people use these cameras to get really cool extreme sports footage, and I'm using it to point out facts in a book. Okay, so a few clean eating dietary approaches to discuss, and the first one, the alkaline diet. And this is headed up by Natasha Corrett, and it was featured on Clean Eating's Dirty Secrets. The idea is to eat alkaline-based foods. The reason being is because the body is always maintaining a pH level between acid and alkaline, and the idea is that if you eat too many acidic foods, it puts the body under stress because it's always trying to maintain that pH level. Thing is, the body's designed to maintain a pH level, so in my opinion, it's not really causing any extra stress because it's a normal bodily function. In my opinion, it's like saying if it's hot outside, don't go outside because it'll cause you to sweat and sweat will cause extra stress on the body. But we all know the body is designed to sweat and it's a perfectly healthy function. So in my opinion, the alkaline diet, it's not even worth the paper it's written on. Now, Delicious the Ella is quite a big clean eating person over here and um, on the documentary, there was a cracking quote from her website uh, about milk and why it's bad for us. And it's basically saying, milk causes calcium to be drawn from our bones to rebalance the acidity it causes. Um, that just sounds like complete waffle. Um, and if we have a look in the dietetic manual, we'll be able to see that um, sources of calcium in the UK, milk and dairy right at the top, and foods which can be recommended as good sources of calcium include milk, whole milk, semi-skim milk, or skim milk. And again, it's right at the top of that list of sources of calcium um, in this dietetic manual. So I'd love to know what qualifications Delicious Ella has to be able to say that. And maybe that's the thing, because she's not a registered dietitian, she's not regulated by anyone who can say, you can't say that. And I think that's where the problems are starting to arise. These people aren't regulated, so they can say what they want as passionately as they want. And then that's why people are starting to believe them. Now, gluten-free, which is very much preached by the Hemsley sisters, and they only do gluten-free recipes. Uh, now, gluten-free isn't clean eating if you've been diagnosed with celiac disease, but um, a lot of people out there promote gluten-free for other reasons, like cleansing and your digestion and things like that. Now, looking at the dietetic manual here, um, there is only one reason suggested in here as to why you should prescribe a gluten-free diet, and that's if you've got celiac disease. And celiac disease prevails in one in 100 people, which is 1% of the population. So according to the dietetic manual, there's only one reason I can find as to why you'd need to prescribe a gluten-free diet, and that is if you have celiac disease, which affects one in 100 people, 1% 1 of the population. So for the 99% of the rest of us who don't have celiac disease or haven't been diagnosed with it, there appears to be no extra benefit of going gluten-free because our bodies seem to be perfectly capable at dealing with gluten and have done for hundreds of years. So it just seems pointless going gluten-free if you don't have celiac disease. 
So one final clean eating trend I'm going to touch upon is when we start cutting out different food groups, which really winds me up. Um, so when we hear people going carb free or dairy free or meat free, and when I say meat free, I'm not um, saying being a vegetarian is bad, it's when people decide to go meat free for non-personal reasons. Um, now there's a quote in this dietetic manual, which I'm going to show you now which actually defines what malnutrition is. And it says here that malnutrition is a state of nutrition in which a deficiency or excess or imbalance of energy, protein and other nutrients causes measurable adverse effects on tissue or body form. For example, body shape, size or composition, body function and clinical outcome. Now I'm perfectly aware that malnutrition is a very extreme case and you can get sources of protein from vegetables, for example, if you're following a plant-based diet. Um, but my point is that we're losing the idea of what a healthy balanced diet is by getting a balance of all the different nutrients and if we're starting to cut out things like carbs or protein we're gonna start seeing adverse effects maybe not to the degree of malnutrition but we're gonna start seeing adverse effects which our bodies aren't designed to deal with by cutting out really important food groups so after touching on a few of those clean eating approaches and the reason why I did this video in the first place, my major concern now is how there are so many people on social media and the internet who have far less or no qualifications compared to medical professionals who are promoting clean eating, but they have much more of an influence on people than actual medical professionals who can only give evidence-based advice. And I feel the reason why medical professionals like dietitians, for example, don't go on the internet and preach and bang on like these clean eaters about what is the right way of eating is because they're medical professionals and they're governed by the Health and Care's Professionals Council and the BDA. And I think if they went on the internet and did that, like these clean eating kind of people, it would probably be deemed as unprofessional. So in my opinion, you cannot beat the overwhelming evidence that dietitians or well-qualified nutritionists have to practice by. All we need to do is eat a healthy, balanced diet. It's that simple. It's what's normal, it's what our body's used to, and it's what's healthy. Otherwise, I'm really worried we're just gonna lose sight of what is a normal, healthy way of eating. Okay, so there are my thoughts on clean eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'm always up for a healthy debate, so please leave your comments below. And remember, hashtag just eat normal. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.